Prison Story family, good morning, y'all. Uh, I got a good one for you here, man. It's kind of late at night. I couldn't sleep. So I figured I would dig into a little bit of uh, Texas prison history for y'all. And this is a story that's going to be a little bit rough, y'all. It's not anything that Texas is proud of or dead ashamed of this guy. He was probably one of the most dangerous inmates ever in the United States of America, if not the entire world. And he came right here from Galveston. So we'll tell y'all about him. The man's name was Butch Ainsworth. When I was a kid growing up, man, I would hear a lot of stories about Butch. You would hear things you wouldn't know if it was true. Uh, they were kind of wild. Very, very extravagant. But it, they were all true. The man was a terror in the streets. And turned in to be the worst terror inside of a Texas prison ever, y'all. They said your fatal mistake in life would be to let Butch Ainsworth catch you looking at him. Think about that. You could not put your eyes on the man without getting killed. So what do you do, man? Like, when he comes around, you literally gotta stare at the ground, stare at the wall, stare somewhere else like he's the damn warden or something. And if you didn't, they'd call your mama and put you in a pine box, man. Butch was extra famous around here for being the first guy, and I think the only guy, to ever break out of Galveston County Jail. When Butch broke out the Galveston County Jail, he actually broke out of a tank that I've been in myself. And the way they did it was trick the police and take them hostage, man. It's the only way you can ever do it. You got to gorilla your way out of there, and he did it. And I have an article right here. I'm going to read a little bit about I'm going to read the article. Because it starts his career and then I'm going to go into more about Butch and his life, okay? What we know about him. It says, Butch Ainsworth, Ronnie Roper, and Buster Harris hope to get as far as Mexico where they can enjoy the freedom they gained during their escape from Galveston County Jail in 1969. They made it as far as Flatonia, Texas. In the early morning hours of November 22nd, the fugitives stopped to get gas at a service station in Schulenburg. After they drove away with their three hostages, the attendant called police. Another witness spotted the group headed into the woods near Flatonia that morning. Officers from several law enforcement agencies converged on the area. A deputy sheriff spotted their abandoned car in a helicopter flying overhead, saw a woman waving from the clearing in the trees. One of the fugitives fired at the helicopter. It was probably Butch. But the men eventually decided it was futile to try to shoot their way out. They were surrounded and outmanned and outgunned. After signaling they wanted to surrender, the fugitive each took a hostage as a human shield and walked out of the woods. Buster Harris, Butch Ainsworth, and Ronnie Roper were quickly sent back to Galveston County Jail. I'm just going to try to forget it now, Miss Robert Nichols said after she was freed. The other hostage, Irene Alexander, cried during the interview with reporters. Her 12-year-old son Tommy said he was ready to go back to school. The day he spent as a hostage was his first time to miss class and he wanted to go back. Good kid there. Galveston deputies returned Harris, Roper, and Ainsworth to the county jail and held them under maximum security until they went to trial. A man named George Howard surrendered just a few hours after the escape and he was the first to face a jury in 1970. During the testimony in that case, Roper described Ainsworth as the enforcer and said that the other men were too afraid not to go with him when he had to break out plan. Roper also fingered Ainsworth as the trigger man in Joseph McMahon's shooting. When he took the stand of his own defense, Howard testified he feared for his life. Even so, the jury gave him five years in prison, but he got off lightly compared to the others. In 1971, Ronnie Roper got 15 years in jail. Days before he would have gone on trial in 1972, Butch Ainsworth pleaded guilty to assault with intent to commit murder for shooting Sheriff's Deputy Bob Williams. The judge sentenced Butch to 30 years in prison. But Carl Buster Harris, one of the escapees, ended up with the harshest sentence, the death penalty. Before the breakout, Harris was convicted of murdering his foster mother and her friend in 1967. He spent less than two years on death row in Huntsville. In June 1972, 
the U.S. Supreme Court overturned 39 death sentences, including the one for Harris. So he was given a life sentence. Okay. So Ronnie Roper, Buster Harris, and Butch Ainsworth escaped out the jail with one other guy. That guy gave up quick and said he was scared to death, and Butch made him escape. The other two guys said the same thing, that they did not want to escape, that Butch told them if they didn't come, they were going to die. And literally, Butch laid on the ground and acted like he was sick. When the cop came inside to check on Butch, they ambushed him. Held him hostage, took him downstairs and walked through the green doors and left. Kidnapped them people and hit, hit to the woods. And they were trying to go to Mexico. So, uh, Buster Harris was on a murder case. He had nothing to lose already. You know what I'm saying? Ronnie Roper, he was scared. He didn't know what to do. And Butch was just wild as can be from day one. And he took off, man. So that's how they ended up going to prison back then. And here's the crazy part. Butch Harris and... Uh, I'm sorry. Harris and Butch Ainsworth ended up being building tenders together in East Ham Prison. Like, literally, they got to work together, be guards together, terrorize inmates, and just literally uh, continue their life of crime together inside the prisons unchecked. Now see, the time when this is going on is when uh, Mr. Larry was telling us about the building tenders in Texas, okay? Butch Ainsworth did all this crazy shit, went into prison, and became a guard, not an inmate. Think about this, y'all. Shot a sheriff, did everything in the world, went inside and became a Texas prison guard. A building tender. That's what he was. They said he was one of the worst ones ever. One of the most famous stories about Butch Ainsworth is the fact that he was a bad booty bandit. And that's the real honest to God truth. That he would take it from you. And they said that it turned him on to hear you scream. Hear you fight back. And that's one of the things that, man, is so disgusting. It's unbelievable that he enjoyed that. One of the most famous stories about Butch was him and his fellow building tender. And this is very graphic, y'all. Please, if you don't want to listen to it, don't do it. But they actually made a fellow inmate roll himself up nude inside of a wet blanket. And they electrocuted the blanket just to hear the man scream and to make him agree to have sex. Okay. But what happened was, Butch said that blanket wasn't working good enough. He wasn't shocking hard enough. They made the man stare in bare feet, butt naked on a metal toilet, and threw one of the electric wires in the water, and was zapping the man with the other one, until he agreed to have sex with him. Come on, man. I don't even know what to say about something like that. One of the other famous stories about Butch Ainsworth. The warden transferred his little boyfriend out. We don't know why the warden transferred his boyfriend out. Butch went into the warden's office and cut off a couple of his fingers. Gave him to the warden. And said, bring my little boy back, warden, or it's going to be bad around here. And the same day, they were bringing the boy back. Like, what the hell, man, you know? Uh, I asked Mr. Larry about Butch Ainsworth. Mr. Larry said Butch would attack folks in the hallway like it wasn't nothing with all the other building tenders around. And men would be scared to fight back. Like literally they just let Butch pummel him and go on because it was better like that. And the damn man was a sicko, y'all. There's so many stories you can tell about Butch Ainsworth. I'm going to read to you about the blanket situation. They wrapped, a, they wrapped a wet blanket around him first, plugged an extension cord into a socket. The ends of the extension cord were insulated, and they stuck the synergized electric cord to the wet blanket. This wasn't getting the results they wanted, so they unwrapped the inmate, made him stand up on the commode in Ainsworth's cell, then placed the electric wires to his body and into the water. This caused the inmate to scream from extreme pain, to begin to tremble, even to cry and come submit to the homosexual act. He couldn't handle it no more and did what they wanted. 
Sociologist Marquette says that during his time in East Ham Unit, several building tenors openly kept chains, clubs, and shanks in their cells and lockers. In at least one unit, Ramsey One in Brazoria County, similar weapons were confiscated from building tenors by a junior officer, only to be returned to them by his supervisor the following day. The evidence from a variety of sources indicate that intimidation ranging from humiliating punishment to dietary restrictions and simple assault were used in prison back then. And that's what they did, y'all. But Chainsworth, some guys, listen, it's telling you, some guys had chains, some guys had pipes, some guys had sticks, whatever the hell they felt like they fighted. But Butch Ainsworth was the one that carried the big Bowie knife. Like literally, he walked around inside prison with a big giant knife. And nobody tried to take it from him. And he'd come take something from you. See, the thing about this situation is unbelievable. The way Texas had it back then, that inmates were totally at the mercy of other inmates. And people like Butch Ainsworth were just there. Filling the void of monsters. Just being evil creatures, man. Preying on guys that made mistakes. And that's how our system was formed. It was situated and it was made to be like that back then, y'all. And Butch was just one of many monsters. And I'll start telling y'all about some of the other monsters too, y'all. Um, the Galveston Terror, Butch Ainsworth. 